Amen. I want to talk about come before him with thanksgiving. Come before him with thanksgiving. Amen. Now, there are many prayers that we pray. We uh, pray the prayer of adoration. We pray the prayer of forgiveness. We pray the prayer of supplication. But out of all of these prayers, and all of them have equal merit and, merit and weight, of course, but I believe that the prayer of thanksgiving is a prayer that God loves to hear. For God, in his gracious giving to us, wants to know that we are grateful for what he has already done. Amen. That we're grateful for what he has already done. And sometimes we are focusing so much on what we don't have until we can't thank him for what we already have. Whatever God has blessed you with, it is something to truly be thankful for. It really is. It may not be what you think it should be. It may not be what you want it to be based on what you see other people with. But God has given you what you need. And you and I need to focus on the fact that God has given us what we need. For our God is a gracious God. And we ought always be thankful for what the Lord has already done. There was a conversation that went on between Mr. Faith and Mr. Luck. And quite an interesting conversation, needless to say. Uh, Mr. Faith always talked about how he trusted in God and talked about how God has extended blessings to his life over and over again. Mr. Faith even talked about even when I don't have, my faith tells me I will have because I know my God will always take care of my needs. Now, Mr. Luck, of course, looked at Mr. Faith and he said, you need luck. You don't need faith. Luck is how you get what you need. Look at what I have. Look at how God has blessed me. Of course, Mr. Luck had a little more in comparison than Mr. Faith had, but he thought because he had more stuff physically, he thought that meant he was in a better position with God than Mr. Faith. And this is what happened after some time passed. Uh, one day, Mr. Luck came looking for Mr. Faith, and Mr. Faith said to him, what can I do for you? And he said, well, I want to come to you and talk to you a little bit because my luck now has run out. I don't have any more luck. And you told me you had plenty of faith, and I've come to get some of what you already have. Amen. Sometime in life, when you depend on luck, you can be assured that luck will run out. Amen. How often do you hear people say, I'm lucky? You know anybody that says, I'm lucky? People, I hear that on TV a lot. I hear all around Spartanburg a lot, how lucky I am. There's no such word as lucky. Amen. Amen. If you have anything... It's because you are blessed by God. God is a tremendous giver. And God gives to everyone. And God especially gives to those who believe in the Lord Jesus the Christ. And my friends, let us not fall in that category with Mr. Luck. Let us remember that our God is a God that believes in those of us who believe in him by faith. For by faith, God makes the difference in our lives. So as we live this life, let me tell you one thing. God is always there and ready to bless us and to give us what we need. The writer of the text bids us to come before the Lord with thanksgiving. Amen. In other words, we must come before him with great anticipation. When we come before the Lord with thanksgiving, when we don't have, we still thank God. When we have, we still thank God. When we're well, we thank God. When we're sick, we thank God. Amen, somebody. When we don't have the ride we want to ride in, we still thank God because we know God is still in the blessing business. Am I right about it? We have the assurance of knowing that our God is able to do anything but what fail. Where there is anticipation, there is the faith that something good is on the way. It is good to trust God for what he yet will do. And that God that we serve is a God whose eyes are on the sparrow and he always watches over us. 
Now, what kind of people do not come before the Lord with thanksgiving? Well, one kind of people who does that are the people who think that they do not need him. They think they do not need him. Some people uh, somehow have come to the conclusion that they are self-sufficient. And they are so much self-sufficient that they don't need help outside of themselves. They don't believe that God is an important entity in their lives. They feel they don't need God. They feel they can make it without God. They feel that whatever they need, they can get out and work for it, and they can get it. They feel that whatever they're short of, that somehow if they work hard enough and they're, they're, they're sustaining in their work, that God will provide all of their needs. But let me tell you one thing, my friends. We got to remember that we must realize our need for God. Amen. No matter how many people come and give to you, do know that God is the reason for what they have done. We need God. We need God. We really need God. How can we be people of faith if we don't realize that we need God? How can we tell others about God and what God will do if we don't need God? How can we be assured that no matter what our circumstances may be, that our God that we serve is a God that will make a way somehow? I need him. What about you? I need him in my life. What about you? I need him in my life. What about you? Do you need God as we worship this morning? We, many people think that they don't need God. And because they think they don't need God, they will never come before God with thanksgiving. And then secondly, some people uh, who, who's, who are trying to somehow make it in this world and come before God, they cannot come before God with thanksgiving because there are people who never knew God. Who never ever knew God. I'm not talking about church people. I'm talking about people uh, that think they know God but don't know God. And there are some church people, mind you, who are in the church but God is not in them. They come to church but God is, with, is not with them when they come to church. In other words, they never really knew God. They never really knew God. Some people think because I went to church all my life that that gives me a right relationship with God. But that's not true. That's not true. We must come to a place of accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And this establishes the relationship with God. And because we have this relationship, we come to know God. You can only know God when you have this established relationship with God. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. Somebody in here can testify that I live in a relationship with God. Amen. How many of you are willing to testify that you live in a relationship with God. Now some of y'all holding your hand up like you're scared to hold it up. You don't hold it up like that. You hold it up like that. Amen, somebody. Don't be ashamed to own your God. He said, if you deny me, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. Do you really know him? Do you really know him? Do you know him well enough to tell somebody else about him? Do you know him, know him well enough that you don't doubt him at all? Yes, Even when things are going topsy-turvy for you, yes, you still trust in the Lord. Yes, You've got to know him. Yes, for if you know him, yes, you know everything will be all right. Yes, Some people can't tell other people about the Lord because they really don't know God. Yes, Amen. You wonder why people don't ever testify to other people about God? Because they don't know him. Yes, you can't talk about what you don't know. Yes, Amen. You can't tell others about a relationship you don't have. Amen. So some people want to act like they really know God, want to act like they really live in a relationship with God, but they really don't because they never tell anybody else about the Lord. Amen. Now, regarding earthly relationships, if we, if we have parents, we tell other people about our parents. If we have sisters and brothers, we tell other people about our sisters and brothers. If we have grandchildren, we tell other people about our grandchildren. Am I right about it? Amen. But some people never tell anybody about God. Amen. They never talk about the goodness of God in their lives with other people. They're never so overwhelmed by the presence of God until they just can't keep it to themselves. Amen. They have to tell somebody Amen. about the goodness of the Lord. Now, some people who don't know anything about the Lord, they get disturbed when there are people who talk about God all the time. They, they don't like for that kind of person to come around them because it makes them feel very uncomfortable. 
Because if you don't know God, you can't feel comfortable around people who know God. If you don't talk about God, then you can't be comfortable around people who talk about God. The Bible speaks that we are witnesses for him. That we are witnesses for him. And you can't witness Christ without talking about him. Am I right about it? You got to have that deep down faith way down on the inside that makes all the difference in the world. So what kind of people do not come before the Lord with thanksgiving? People who think they don't need him and people who never knew him. Amen. Amen. People who never knew him. Now be careful that you don't come to church and come to church and come to church and have the devil have you thinking that you know God because you go to church. Amen. Don't even start thinking that you know God because you serve in the church. Don't ever start thinking that you know God because you have a Bible collecting dust in your house. This thing is not about what's on the outside of you. It's about what's on the inside of you. It's about your commitment, your love, and your dedication to God who is able to do anything but fail. Do you know God? Do you know God? Uh, do you really know God? Amen. If you know God, it ought to be something about your life that would let the world know that you know about God. Ought to be some service there. Ought to be some worshiping there. Ought to be some testifying there. Ought to be something about you to let the world know that this God is a true and living God. Ought to be some servicing about you. Amen, somebody. Ought to be something about your life that others can look at you and note that you are very different than everybody else. And you can tell them that the Lord is in my life. And because the Lord is in my life, I can tell the world about him. I can tell a nation that I've been blessed. I can tell him my enemies that God is my soul supplier. I can tell my friends that he sticks closer than a brother. I can tell everybody about the Savior that loves everybody. A Savior that has all power in his mighty hands. So my friends, we must know him. And there are some people who cannot come before the Lord with thanksgiving because they simply don't know him. Amen. Amen. Now some people, uh, they can't come before the Lord with thanksgiving because they are afraid to trust him. They are afraid to trust him. Now these, uh, these things I've mentioned seem very basic and elementary, but you know what? A whole lot of people are not doing them. A whole lot of people are not doing them. Not at all. Amen. To trust God is to lay your head on God's promises. To trust God is to believe that God will do what he says. To trust God is not to take matters into your own hand, but to trust God to work things out all right. Amen, somebody. Now the Bible teaches that we ought to give tithes and give offerings. And the scripture says if we do that, he will do what? Pour out from the windows of heaven a blessing or blessings that we cannot receive. Now, how many of us really trust God to do that? And I'm saying you can't do it if you don't trust God. You got to trust God. You really got to trust him and, and trust him to the point of believing that he will do what he says. If he says give and it will be given to you, then you got to trust him to do just what he says. Amen, somebody. God will never leave us. God will never forsake us, but we got to trust him and know that he is the God of our salvation. What kind of people do not come before the Lord? We're thanksgiving people who are afraid to trust God. Many people can't come before God with thanksgiving. They don't have any kind of confidence in God. They like to look like they do. They like to go to the right places. They like to even say the right things, but they don't trust God. They really don't trust God. They don't trust God with their life. They don't trust God with their souls. They don't trust God with their heart. And my friends, if you intend to come before the, the Lord with thanksgiving, you, you can't be afraid to trust him. You got to trust him. I love that song that says, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. This is something that you do for the rest of your life. It's not an on and off kind of situation, but it's something you do every day of your life until you close your eyes in death. So too many people are afraid to trust God. But let me tell you, it's all right to trust him. I dare you to try. I dare you to try. Amen. He will come through every time, won't he, church?